Welcome everyone. I really hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and have a fantastic day. Welcome everybody. So today I'm going to go through the 100% finished demonstrator for showing what goes on when you basically put loads on your servos with two different types of systems. So system one is kind of like a basic six channel uh, 4.8 volt system. And the reason I'm doing this is to show to people as you start to build bigger airplanes and put bigger servos, sometimes you need to upgrade the battery system and how you're going to be powering those servos so you don't get brownouts. In the future, I am going to do a lot of testing to try to get receivers to go in a brownout condition. If you don't know what a brownout condition is, it's where the voltage gets low enough on your receiver that it actually turns the receiver off and it has to reboot. The second system that I'm using as a demonstrator is an S-Bus system where I use two batteries, one for the receiver power and one for the servo powers power, and I'm going to demonstrate how those heavy loads can also create um, unwanted environments with your radio. So if you look at the system on the left here, uh, designated by the yellow markings, you can see I have six basically standard servos. I have a receiver. This is not an S bus system. And then I have a brand new 4.8 volt battery, which comes with a lot of radios when you buy your first like four channel radio. And this system right here is just to basically show what happens when you start to put higher loads on your servos, i.e. bigger airplanes. The system on the green here, or system designated in green here, is my S-Bus system. If you don't know what S-Bus is, it's Futaba. You can basically just use one wire to run your entire system. I do have two S-Bus servos here, and then I have their SPD-1, which is a decoder, which means you can plug your regular servos into an S-Bus system. This system here is to show what really high loads can do as far as pulling amps and stuff like that. I then have this DROC, uh, what they call a, they, basically it's a voltage regulator, folks, that also shows amps. And I put this on because I can kind of plug it into what other part of, whatever part of the system I want to use it on to actually see what the amp load is. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, folks, so you just have to bear with me. And keep in mind, folks, I'm not saying any of this is 100% accurate. Your mileage is going to vary. All I'm trying to show to you as these servos move here, you can see that voltage moves around all over the place on that 4.8 volt uh, battery. Now, in this kind of setup, it never gets anywhere near getting low voltage that wouldn't be healthy for the system because I've got these little rubber bands set up on these servos to show basically what a, how a trainer would react. Okay. And here you can see where I've now hooked that up on a 6.6 .6 volt system, the system on the left. And I'm using that regulator at the top, outputting only 5 volts, and I'm measuring the amp load. Okay, and in a standard configuration on your standard airplane, folks, you probably have absolutely no danger of having your plane get into a low voltage type situation at all. All I'm trying to do is say as you get into bigger airplanes, you need to consider this, okay? And I hope you read the description, and I hope you're listening to this, because I get a lot of trolls coming out saying this stuff is garbage, and you are completely nuts. You really are. You just need to pay attention here. Like I have said, this is just a demonstrator, okay? Now we're looking at the S-Bus system, and you can see on the left digital display, that is the receiver battery level and it's not changing but then you look at the servo battery level and you can see that it's going up and down as the torque on the servos are put into the system now you can go back and watch one of my other videos on this subject and understand how to have two batteries for your system here is the amp reading on the higher torque system and you can see it gets up to about 3.5 amps now I've done individual servo testing and some of my really high torque servos in the 400 uh, ounce range, those will pull up to about 5.1 amps. That's the most I've ever seen out of any servo I've tested yet is 5.1 amps. So that needs to be a really robust system when you're going to do that. Like on my 188 inch MSL2, that's the type of setup I have. 
In here, I just want to show how I can change the rubber bands to simulate the different loads on these servos to the point where I stall the servo and I can measure, you know, how much the voltage is dropping during a full stalled condition. Folks, this is just a demonstrator. Your, mile, your mileage will vary. All I'm trying to do is make people realize your voltage can be affected by the torque of your servos. Okay, your mileage will vary. So in the future, I'm going to do some videos on this left system by itself, just talking about standard configurations. Like if you're getting to it like a 40 or a 60 size Warbird and you're going to use your original radio, you're probably okay. But if you're going to put it in a 150 inch Warbird, you might want to reconsider and you might also need to look and see if you got enough torque to move the flying surfaces. So all I'm trying to do, folks, is share this stuff, okay? And in the future, this system on the right is where we're going to really pull loads down a lot. Now keep in mind, one of my goals in producing this system is how to replicate brownouts in the receivers, where I create a condition where the voltage gets pulled down so much that the actual receiver shuts off once the load's taking off of it voltage-wise, the receiver resets and measure how long it takes for that to reset. Okay? Please like and subscribe and rock on, everybody. See you next time. Thank you.